Right, well, it's morning again. I'm not quite sure what you want from me. I'm just going to keep going, because you're kind of just standing there. There's got to be something to this. I have no idea where I am right now. <laughs> uh, Leading me somewhere. Where are we going? And you disappeared. Thanks. Not like I need guidance or anything. Oh, maybe I can open this door. Can't really go over there. You do look ever so drawn this morning. That bloody dog kept me awake. And there was that thing in the sky. The radio says it was an electrical storm, but I don't know what it was. This morning, I found some dead birds in the garden. I'm sorry to hear that. I wonder if it might have had something to do with the atmospheric conditions. My Stephen will probably know. I'll give him a call in a bit. Wendy, I've popped around because we've had some incidents with some of the more elderly residents. Mrs. Bout has, well, vanished, for want of a better word. Wandered off somewhere, no doubt. I thought I'd best check and see you're all right. The council are talking about a flu epidemic. Yes, well, I'm not sure it's flu as such. But uh, no headaches... Nosebleeds, no joint pains, or digestive issues. Dr. Wade, I'm as fit as a fiddle. Go and find some real sick people to look after. And if you see that son of mine, tell him that his mother's looking for him. Alright, so we're starting up on Wendy's story, I suppose. And obviously she's Stephen's mother. Uh, Frank's wife, or maybe ex-wife because they apparently are living in two different places. So that would make sense. What does it say? Valis say no to Valis extension. Uh, is a seventh tower really necessary to register your complaint? Add your name to the petition or make your voice heard. Contact Barbara uh, Footer? I think that's what it says. Alright, so, now, I don't know, May Barbara and Dr. Wade are, at the very least, colleagues, but them coming together to see Wendy on this matter makes me think maybe they're husband and wife, potentially? I'm not totally sure. I could be mistaken, but I think that house over there might be accessible. Let's see where we are. Alright, so we started off actually right next to the observatory, but for some reason we weren't able to 
completely access it, and holy shit, this is a gigantic map. <laughs> I just spent like, maybe like an hour or more just in Yachtin alone. And I think I got everything. Seems like it. But yeah. Wow. And I'm guessing we're just going to be going all the way up and around until eventually the observatory. I feel like that's where this is going to end, is getting into the observatory. Maybe even seeing what happened to Kate. Maybe. You never know. Oh, just for a few days, yeah. First thing in the morning. I don't want the kids to catch this flu if it's going round. It's probably that father, Jeremy, spreading it around while he tries to bully everyone into donations for the summer fete. It seems very quiet in the village, actually, Wendy. Not much bullying to be done. Oh, father. I didn't know you were here. Clearly. Listen, I came up here to tell Amanda that we've had some vandalism in the village. Must be a teenage thing. Tagging, I think they call it. Someone's painting all over doors and things. Little vandals. Well, I'll tell Neil to make sure we're properly locked up when we go. A good man like my Eddie, gone. And these thugs and yops running around defacing property. He gave everything to his country, and look what he got in return. Nothing but an early death. He had a good life, Wendy. He had a short life. I look to my birds, father. Lives lived unencumbered. Free and simple. That's as God meant things to be. Eddie. Maybe that's another one of her sons, possibly? That would make sense. Oh, I did not think I was actually going to be able to climb this. computer in the observatory has set itself to 6.07 a.m. June 6th, 1984. I don't understand what that means. June 6th, 1984. Hmm. Well, that might be relevant at some point. I'll try to keep track of it. You know, try to remember the date. 1906-1984. Ah, oh, this might actually be important. What's in here? Nothing of consequence. Oh, there's a phone. I'm wondering where that was. What? what? What's going on? Hey. I'll be with you shortly. It got as far as the Haverton substation before we cut the lines. The interchange there just started dialing numbers at random. And the symptoms you're seeing match those we've been tracking here. Sickness, headaches, nosebleeds, eventual hemorrhage, then just light. Whatever the hell that means. Then we've got to stop it before it finds another way out of the valley. Clive, you've got to order a strike. What? An airstrike. We have to kill it. No. No, uh, I don't agree. We've quarantined the valley, we've cut the lines, it's contained. What if you're wrong? Are you happy to have that on your conscience? Stephen, I said it's contained. Well, clearly that didn't happen. Because if it had, we wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> or maybe we're Steven. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we're like Steven or Kate. Either one. We did come from the observatory, so maybe while Kate was, you know, stowed away inside that observatory, all of this was going on. And the strike is about to be called in. Would not be surprised if that's what ends up happening. Can't open that. I'm hearing another phone. Oh, 
Ah. Hello, Frank Appleton. Break a lost cowboy. This is traveling Sherlock. You copy over. You damn bugger, Charlie. You don't do it when you're using the phone. You take this too seriously, Appleton. I'm telling you. It is serious. It's not larking about. You be listening to your number stations again, Frankie. It's not funny. <laughs> it's serious stuff, and you should mind it. Now then, I'm assuming this is about a pint. I am going to the Whistler. My round, I think. I'll never argue with that. Frank, have you seen the sky? It's amazing. Don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I didn't realize we were off to a poetry recital as well, Charlie. <sighs> Well then. God, everything's locked. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother going up there. Doubtful there is anything. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so where's this light? Okay, where are you taking me? What's next? Terry called this morning. Said there was a problem with Harvey. Said he couldn't get through to the vet, so I said I'd come round and take a look. There's a lot of dead birds today. More here, too, poor little things. I've been trying to get hold of Steve, and he always knows what to do. Got round here, and no sign of either of them. With any luck, the stupid creature will have run under a car. It's probably rabies. All right, well, I don't know. I really don't know. Like, I really thought that uh, Wendy and Frank were, uh, you know, separated or something like that. I mean, clearly they both know that uh, they both know Frank. Or, uh, sorry, not Frank, uh, Stephen. So I'm just trying to piece together certain relationships. I feel like that might have been a bit contradictory of what I thought, but at the same time, it kind of coincided, so it's hard to say. And there's nothing in here. And this is going to be locked, isn't it? Yes, it is, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Harvey! Harvey, come on, boy. Come on, Harvey. Come on, Harvey. Come on, boy. Harvey. Harvey. I guess their dog went missing. Ah, shit. This, that, that's taking me off into a completely different direction, though. Ah. Uh. Right out into the woods. Do I want to go that way? Well, yeah, we'll go off into there. I mean, I'll just follow the path backward if uh, it takes me too far. All right, all right, I'm coming. God. So pushy. Nice water effects. Just push it. Push the bloody thing. You push it. I told you it would get stuck. I should have just taken the car. It was a stupid idea. <sighs> Moving here was a stupid idea. And I told you, Barbara said they blocked the roads. Oh, well, Barbara says so. You go and look then. Wait, is that Harvey? Harvey? Harvey! Harvey! Here, boy! Come here, boy! Uh, I think your dog's going to be going missing pretty soon. If not just yet. The art style reminds me a lot of Dear Esther. Or not, I'm sorry, not Dear Esther. Uh, Vanishing of Ethan Carter. That's what I'm going for. Nailed it. This actually didn't take me too far out. Uh, 
Wendy, I'm married. You have to stop this. He's still sweet on you, Elizabeth. But he left. It's too late. You loved each other long before she came along. It's just about making things as they should be. Wendy, no. It's not like you won't bump into each other anyway. One drink, what can that hurt? <sighs> one drink, maybe. Oh, one <laughs> drink, wonderful. <laughs> right, brilliant. So, Stephen's mother is encouraging... This woman to cause him to commit adultery. Fantastic. Excellent person. Whoa, that was almost really bad. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. It's like, I mean, we uh, saw earlier that Lizzie, uh, dur or, uh, during Jeremy's storyline, Lizzie was asking for some uh, semblance of consultation from the holy man, but we've been given a little bit of uh, additional backstory. Is there nothing here? Yes, there is. Should we go down? Just leave it. We've got to keep moving. Sean! We can't just leave him. He must be really badly hurt. Jesus, Diana, we've got the kid in the car. We should just keep driving. We can't just drive off and... Look. He's there. He's in the car. Oh, oh he's hurt. We've got to get down there. I said, leave him. We've got to get out of the valley while we can. Oh, my God. He's trying to undo his seatbelt. There we are. He's fine now. All right, so some dude wrecked his car. I guess he drove off into here accidentally. Yep, there he is. Oh, shit. Is that the uh, mechanic? Ah, God, I can't remember his name. I think that might be him. Just down here. Well, unfortunately, we're not getting anything. Maybe if we go a little bit further into the water. I guess not. All right, whatever. I was hopeful that there might be a little something there, but I guess that is not the case. Hmm. I wonder who that is that was in that truck when that happened. I'm trying to remember that mechanic. His name is Sam. That's who it was. He was a car mechanic. Sam. Not to say that definitely is Sam, but would make sense. The fuck? I am really confused. Alright, let's just keep going up. Good grief, Wendy. You'll catch your death. They're all dead, Father. All of my birds. Here. Take my jacket. I tried to be a good woman, a Christian woman, but I've been proud. Just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. What matters is we try our best. God sees that. Come back to the village with me. I'm not so far from Stevens now. I need to find my son. It's what Eddie would have done. Yes, I suppose it is. 
I'll say a prayer for you. Thank you, Father. She loved you, you know, Mary. You helped her. I'm sorry if I judged you harshly. It doesn't matter, Matt. It's late. You, you should find a place to sleep. I'm sure when the sun comes up, everything will seem better. All right, I think I may have misunderstood. I don't believe that Frank actually is uh, or had ever been in a relationship with Wendy. I think I just kind of assumed that. I think Eddie, instead of being her son, one of her other sons was actually her husband, and he's dead now. So, yeah, my mistake, if that is the case. God, they are just running this music on. Don't get me wrong, I like it. I'm just... It's a lot. Surprising. Right, what's going on over here? Huh. Keep on seeing some sort of silhouette over here. Yeah, this is going to be locked too. Yep, of course it is. Alright, now do I want to keep going that way or do I want to go upstairs? Yeah, let's go upstairs. Ooh, pretty bad train wreck. Ah. Howard. Howard, what's happened? Stephen, thank God. Listen, I need you to get to the junction box. See if there's a phone working. No, stay back. Don't come up here. Oh, Christ. Is that... Bloody idiot. <laughs> Where the hell did they think they were going? I think they must have thought they could walk out along the line. Well, there won't be any more trains now. You're a callous bastard, Stephen. Just pragmatic, Howard. Did you say there's a working phone in the junction box? All right, well, from what I'm gathering here, whatever the issue is, Stephen's the one that's probably going to have to solve it. Wow, they went to really extreme measures to make sure nobody got out. Jesus. So evidently this is contagious, somehow. Or it's more so it moves in some sort of uh, pattern. You know, it picks one person, marks that person... They start having, you know, nosebleeds and stuff, and then they disappear, and that moves on to the next person. I'm guessing that with, for example, Amanda's family, it started off with the kids, and then it moved on to Neil, her husband. I just don't understand how she didn't get claimed in the whole thing. It's very weird. It seems kind of arbitrary how it works. I've lost my shoes. I lost my shoes, sir. There's arches on the green. They take my shoes, sir. Howard! Howard Lantham! You open the door this instant, young man! I lost my shoes. Now get up. Get up! I lost my shoes. What on earth are you doing here, Howard? Stephen. He told me to stay in case Lizzie phoned. Stephen, where is he? What are you doing with those birds? Concentrate, Howard. Where's Stephen? He said he couldn't help them. He took my shoes so I'd stay. 
Listen to me, Howard Lantham. You find your shoes and you get to the village. Find Father Jeremy, he'll give you some soup or something. Be off with you. Where are you going? I'm gonna find my son. Then I'm gonna ask him what on earth he thinks he's doing. Well, Howard's gone insane. Where are we currently? We are there. Wow, we have really made a move on with this. Almost halfway through the map. I don't think I can open that door, but there's at least a note on it. Junction box out of uh, commission until further notice. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go back down this... Oh, no. There's a gate right there. Excellent. And I don't think I can keep going this way. It seems like it has it locked off pretty... Pretty well. Yeah. All right. Got to go back down. Well, there's something over there. Ah. I think I just found my next destination. Where is this? It's just another park? Yeah, it's a pond. Oh god, do I have to go all the way down there? Ah, I don't want to do that. That's going to take a while. Boo. I think I found it. It's actually not that way. It's over here. It was just across the pond. Fancy seeing you here. Oh. Is everything all right, my dear? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's just... Robert. <laughs> that man doesn't deserve you. I know everybody thinks I'm just a mither and old busybody, but someone has to say what everyone else is thinking. We both know that this marriage, it's not how things are supposed to be. Are you talking about me and Robert? Or is this really about Stephen and Kate? I suppose it is. I have to accept it, I know, but she doesn't belong here. You see that, don't you? There's a place for people, and this isn't hers. Oh. But I'm not talking about the color of her skin. Don't look at me like that. What they do up there, it's not natural. There are some things we're not supposed to understand. I don't like her, and I don't like how Stephen is around her. He was a better man when he was with you. Hmm. Well, we just found out that Kate is not white, I'm guessing. Maybe black, maybe... I don't know. Some ethnicity that is not white. Um, furthermore, you know, and she's also American. But uh, furthermore, she's um, not very popular with anybody, really. Uh... I thought that she wasn't very well accepted by, you know, the majority of the town, but even Steven's mother doesn't like her. And I'm not really sure why. Like, the very little I've seen of her, she seemed like a very nice person. And she seemed to care about Steven. But, I guess, I don't know, she's a scientist uh, of some sort. And I'm guessing Wendy isn't too fond of that. But then again, her, her son's a scientist, so I don't really understand what exactly the problem is. I guess whatever it is that they're studying specifically is what she's not too fond of. Which I can understand. It kind of is causing a lot of crazy shit to happen. <laughs> And 
It's uh, becoming pretty apparent to me that I'm most likely going to have to make a lot of cuts throughout this series just because there's a lot of dead periods in between, stuff that's not really going on. Something you probably would expect out of a uh, walking simulator. Um, so apologies in advance if it feels excessive. I'm just trying to cut out, you know, all the bullshit and kind of silence and boring parts. Rachel, darling, I'm sorry about taping over your music, but we, that is your dad and I, in case you come home, I mean, I know Mrs. Graves is looking after you over there, but just in case you come home, we wanted to let you know we're going to head over to Barnes. Evie! Evie! Sam, I'm leaving a message for Rachel. Are you going to say hello? Jesus Christ, Evie, we ain't got time for this. The bloody car won't start. We're going to have to walk. Sam, shush, it's for Rachel in case she comes back here. But Charlie says everyone's getting together at the hall. Rachel's at the camp. She'll be fine. Rachel, darling, anyway, listen, as I was saying, we're going to be at the village hall. We'll wait there for you. I think it's best if you just stay put and mind what Mrs. Graves tells you. We love you, darling. Bye. You finished? Right, grab that bloody case and let's get moving. Come on. All right, well, Sam's a prick. It's your fucking daughter, you idiot. All right. I don't I doubt there's anything going on in the backyard other than clothespins. That's about it. Now, I I got to admit, I am very impressed at how much there is in this game in terms of just how expansive and broad this map happens to be. And we have another house we can go into. All right, there, oh, there's a, a radio thing over here. There's something in the observatory with me. I can feel it reaching out to me. When it's close, I'm overcome with the most profound sense of loneliness. Hmm. That's odd. Not exactly the emotion I was expecting her to say. Nope. I don't know what I thought was going to happen there. Ooh. Upstairs. Wendy, wake up. Eddie, is that you? No, it's me. It's Frank. Oh, Frank. Oh, the door was open. I didn't think Graham would mind. I'm sure he won't. What are you doing here? Looking for Stephen, but I just ran out of steam. And the door was open. Have you listened to the radio? I thought I heard him on the radio before. It's all over the valley. Don't you get that? This isn't some abstract thing. Whatever came down into the tower has got out. They've quarantined the whole valley. It's right here in the observatory. It's out in the world. It's adapting and spreading. Do you understand? No, we can't turn it away. What's he talking about? I don't know, But if he's on the radio, I can try and reach him on the CB. You go to Stephen's house, and if I get hold of him, I'll tell him to come and find you. Hmm. All right, so maybe this isn't a religious sort of thing. I can't, I obviously can't definitively say that just from listening to there, but it might be something a bit more, I don't know, insidious. I, don't, I wouldn't say a monster per se, but something. I guess I can't listen to that. Oh well. All right, what ne what's next on the line? List, whatever. Is that another? F is there another phone over there? No. What's this? No, nothing. 
Where are we on the map? What the hell? Where's the you are here thing? Am I blind? Can I not see it? Is it not here? Hmm. Alright, whatever. Probably just blind. More paint. Come on, come on, come on, you stupid bastard. Damn bloody thing! Jesus! Come on, not now! Jesus, come on, you bastard! Start! Start, you bastard! Come on! Gah. Why is he painting, though? I still don't understand that. Did I just miss it, or what? Also, I'm hearing a phone. Stephen? Where? Stephen, are you here? It's your mother. Answer me. Steven! Am I playing Wendy right now? Because I'm not really seeing her silhouette anywhere. What have you done, Stephen? Oh, Kate. Alright, so they're... Keeping track of constellations and stars. What are these symbols? There must be a logic to the pattern. It's shifting in response to me. It's alive. It's the only explanation. All right, I think I'm starting to put it together. So at the observatory, they're keeping track of all these constellations and stars, right? So I'm thinking what happened is through the telescope, something traveled through it somehow. I don't know how, but somehow it did. And it got into the observatory. And then it got out. And here we are. Also, I think it's pretty obvious that the thing, whatever it is, is that light. It's this light that's leading me everywhere. Stephen, where's Kate? Are you here? Uh, come on. Stephen? I can hear the planes. It's the government coming to rescue us. Oh, no. You can come out now. It's all going to be all right. I can hear the jets coming. It's like when Eddie came home. It's like your dad coming home again. I'm here. I'm down here. This way. All those birds. So I think it may have just taken her. I was, there's two different ways that could have gone. Either the planes flew over and killed her. 
or just as the planes were flying over, she was taken as well. I feel like I should know the definitive answer, and I'm just too stupid to, to be certain, but I think it's something like that. Actually, that looks like there's a lot going on up there, and this seems to be a bit of a dead end. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. I I... This has to be some sort of hallucination. This would just be way too weird of a turn. 